Now, this was put up in the group as a very short case, uh, and I did that. The patient, the moment the patient came to the OPD, I had the video recorded. I was teaching my residents, and that's when it got recorded. It's a classical case of a thyroglossal swelling. Now, is it a cyst or a fistula? That's where the question is. Right? It started as a thyroglossal cyst only. In a 12-year, 13-year-old boy, uh, say about 80% of them are detected under 20 years of age. And most of the time, it's a pediatric uh, problem. The I don't, I don't want to get into the theory of it, but it's got to do with the remnants of the uh, thyroid development when it happens around the 8th or 10th week. And basically, as it goes down, the embryonic elements, they, 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 they stay behind some of these. And along the thyroglossal tract, anywhere, you can have this developing. Now, in the, in the scope course and also in the exam, very often you are asked to demonstrate how to do the tongue protrusion test, which was demonstrated in this video. I did it myself. So, you can actually know that it's a lateral position for the observer and the patient is asked to extend the neck. And then the patient needs to be taught that you need to keep the jaw open as the tongue goes out and in. The best way to do that is to demonstrate to the patient rather than just expecting. And most people don't do well in the exam and they do it in the flex position of the neck and they are not able to demonstrate it. Extension allows for you to have a look at it because it opens up the neck. And also one more thing that extension does is that the thyroglossal tract which is lying coiled gets straightened up. So when it gets straightened up it can pull it and that's how it functions. So, extension of the neck from a lateral position observing it is more of an inspective finding. Of course, you can also palpate it. So, that's a classical thyroglossal cyst demonstration. Midline swelling moves on deglutition, moves on protrusion of tongue. And the all thyroid swellings move on deglutition unless there is anaplastic change or they are fixed or there is thyroiditis which is where they get stuck. And they move due to what we all know that it is attachment to the pretracheal fascia and then to the letting go um, uh, tracheal complex where it it is the inferior constrictor and all those factors they come into play but protrusion of tongue movement is an extremely important sign which you should look for one more sign that you should look for because we just sent a video and a lot of you keep asking question as to what was this this is all the information we provide based on that you should actually spec uh, mention as to what is more that you would like to do and um, the test that you need to do more is translimination, which we didn't demonstrate, fluctuation, which we didn't demonstrate because this was for you to, sh to do and write that we would do that. Diagnosis is spot on, there is nothing wrong. I think everybody made a diagnosis of this case. Now, thyroglossal cysts, if they are not treated, like any cyst anywhere, the common mnemonic I teach students is CHIT, carcinoma, hemorrhage, infection and torsion. Torsion happens in a pedun peduncled cyst, not the one which is fixed like this one. But carcinomas do happen. Which carcinomas are common in the uh, thyroglossal cyst? Peplidic carcinoma of thyroid, squamous cell carcinoma. These are the common ones. They are rare as such, but amongst the rare ones, the the, these are the common ones. So therefore, it is very important for a lot of people to understand us that you need a good ultrasound of the neck to look for what is what about the, the gland or the other thing to look for. Some people say, can there be an ectopic thyroid tissue in this? So they need to. They, some of them would ask for a scan, not because it's mandatory, but I think ultrasound is a good enough test, which is a part of quadruple test for thyroid. So when you do the ultrasound of the neck, you know whether th if the gland is normal, then that's thyroglossal cyst, and then thyroglossal cyst contents can be seen on ultrasound. The, if there is a heteroechoic pattern, you should suspect something. It's not that carcinomas are very common. Like I said, m maybe about 150 odd cases or something. It is not so common, but you should look for it and therefore it should be treated and operated. Now coming to what should you do, so investigations would be to confirm the diagnosis to support it to treat the patient. This was a discharge in one also. Yes, and now I forgot to mention, like I mentioned about carcinoma as one complication, the other is hemorrhage, third is infection. So it got infected, it is very common since it is connected somewhere. And when it gets infected, it can become an abscess which ruptures and forms a fistula. There are some true thyroglossal fistulae also, which are out of the uh, connection to the skin. But classically, this is how it happens. She, he gives a classical history of a swelling being there earlier, which got uh, became a little complicated towards the end, and it gave way. There was there were features of inflammation, and then finally it happened. Now, how do we investigate? 
we'll investigate by doing an ultrasound of the neck, which is very important, which is an extension of clinical examination. Especially in the neck, it serves as a stethoscope of a surgeon. On ultrasound, you'd be able to see the gland, the nodes, and whether it is thyroglossal cyst, and whether it's simple or complex, or whether it's got an element of malignancy in it. So ultrasound can really help you. Do you need an FNAC? Very controversial, because needle can introduce infection. A lot of us would not like to do it. Uh, by and large, it's a classically a clinical diagnosis, which is confirmed by ultrasound, and then we treat by surgery. Now, is surgery the only treatment for thyroglossal cyst? The answer is no. You can observe, and you can observe forever. If the patient is a high risk patient, if the patient is likely to be unfit for surgery, there is a case for doing sclerotherapy of kind, embolization of sclerotherapy. Ethanol has been used. They inject it into that, and like any cyst, it can fibrose and maybe disappear. Well, that, 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 that's not a very good treatment. Not the people who aren't bothered about the cosmesis appearance of the or the complications happening, they may not be too fussy, but it should be uh, removed. And the classical operation that we hear of now coming to the surgical part of it. What else? You need to exclude the lymph nodes. You need to exclude malignancy. That's it. Otherwise, the answer is cyst trunks operation. You would say in the exam, cyst trunks operation. I'll do. And what is cyst trunks? A classical operation. You know the connection is to the foramen cecum down to hyoid and uh, we need to remove the central component of hyoid okay. not the lateral the convo they remain but that's where the ligaments the muscles are all attached sternohyoid omohyoid right thyrohyoid so we remove the central part and that's what needs to be cut and then the supra omohyoid part the one which is above needs to be dissected carefully to avoid recurrence sometimes there are offshoots and tracts so supraomoid fossa should be clearly dissected. There should be nothing abnormal there. You should be able to bear it up. And then uh, we request the anesthetist. When we've gone to the base of tongue, myelohyoid we crossed. And we request the anesthetist to push the tongue down with a tongue depressor. So then we are able to get a little chunk of the base, base not base, the, the end of it so that we don't miss out. Basic basic idea is not to have recurrence so that you can get the little bit of healthy tissue from the tongue along with the with the with the tract along with the central hyoid bone and that's it now open surgery is not the only option these days there are uh, uh, situations there are reports of people treating it endoscopically now needless to say it's very complex and in fact whether you like it or you don't they are also treating it by robot and uh, that robotic excision is to avoid any scar in the neck. They, if there are patients who are absolutely obsessed with the scar in the neck, then to do circumarular robotic approach, axillary robotic approach. Well, um, I mean, I leave it to you to understand. Uh, there's no point killing a mosquito with an AK-47. And typically, when the m mosquito flies, it's the <laughs> it's the person on whom the mosquito is sitting gets killed. So I think they, they, that may amount to overkill, but that's how you manage the thyroglossal fistula in this case. Any questions that you would have? So is there any difference in the uh, incision or the surgery for the cyst and the fistula if it, when it is well, That's a very good question. Actually, we'll encompass the skin. Otherwise, what is the incision? Incision, not thyroid incision, but it's in the crease-like thyroid incision. It, the flaps would be subplatismal. We'll expose the midline like we do, but the incision is in the crease, just a skin incision neatly taken up and down. I like to take a very small incision. It's possible to dissect, but don't jump onto the cyst and don't rub, puncture it because that's when it becomes a very messy surgery. It's better to go lateral to medial. So when you go lateral to medial, you can get a hide in your control very easily. And then this gets lifted up and you go right down to the um, the the body of the hyoid bone from both sides using a thick uh, cotton cutting scissors you can cut this side you can cut this side or a bone cutter once you cut it it's a free track mm -hmm. then you can follow the track right up to the tongue base right up to the base where it is attached and you can do that but if there is a fistula or the skin is not looking good so like in this case it's not looking very good you take an ellipse and then stay in the same crease with the ellipse gone 
the flap can be raised in the same way. Neck has a beautiful way to heal. So even if you mess around, it heals well. But we should give a good scar and, um, and, and it's not po difficult. The surgery is not very complex. The concern here was to why should we operate? It can change into malignancy. It can get infected and become a fistula like you see in this case. So it's an example that if you don't treat thyroglossal cyst, he's, tr he's uh, got it for how many years? For since, about since birth. So he's now 13 years. So he kept it for 13 years. If it was done early, he wouldn't have had a fistula. Now, and fistula is no good news because that would produce a bad skin and bad scarring and poor healing. So it should be treated because it may get infected. And this malignancy is one thing you need to exclude. Now, needless to say, once you excise it, the whole tract and this uh, the cyst goes for histopathology, mm -hmm. must exclude a malignancy. And like I said, ultrasound excludes the gland being there in place. I mean, it, it shows that gland is in place. So there is no ectopic tissue. But thyroglossal cyst is one place you may have ectopic thyroid tissue, which can change into papillary carcinoma. So you need to, ex this is one place where people might ask you, would you like to do a scan or not? I wouldn't mind if it is done. But there is that is no longer a problem because with ultrasound I know there is a thyroid gland mm -hmm. because that scan was to know if the normal gland is there or not. Yes. Lingual thyroid and displaced. These are two places where you may actually do a thyroid scan just to know if the thyroid gland is there or not. Right, sir. So is there any chance of having tuberculosis in the cyst? Yes, why not? Yes, very good question. Tuberculosis is common in India and it can mimic almost anything. You know, there is always a lymphatic uh, element to all swellings here. It could well be a tubercular lymph node also, it can which, can, which can move on trunk protrusion if it is uh, pre-laryngeal and it's stuck to the hyoid. End of the day, that's what, I mean, it can give you a false sense of, uh, that's why we need to investigate. But tuberculosis per se developing in a thyroglossal cyst, it's possible, but uh, not probable. Okay. Commonly. It well itself could be a lymph node. So don't just swear by it. Keep a differential diagnosis and be prepared to discuss. But we are looking at a swelling which was present since birth mm -hmm. and exactly bang on in the midline. Classical features of protrusion of tongue test being positive. And the history is quite suggestive and certainly no history of constitutional symptoms of tuberculosis. Yes. That's the way to exclude it.